Hello and welcome to week 12. This week, I tried to make chocolate-covered oranges, try out walking desk life, Addison continues to be completely adorable, and Alice tries on dresses for the ball. All of that and more in this week's episode of Life with the Carlins. Alrighty, I just pulled up at Alice's shop. In case you guys are unaware, she owns a bridal shop called the New Fangled Bride. Uh, but next weekend, we are going to a uh, an event here in Roanoke that's really kind of like well known called the Black and White Ball. It's like a masquerade style ball. Um, and because Allie also sells formal gowns, we are going to try to figure out what she's going to wear uh, next weekend, which obviously has to be either black or white. So we'll see what she's got. What you working on, Mike? <laughs> the chair's broken. <laughs> I sat down and look at this guy. Oh no! We can <laughs> fix that, right? Let's build some quick suspense. The event is sold out, right? Yes. But so Alice knows somebody that has two tickets. It's got to be I got so, it, but we're seeing if they're still available. So Mike and Sammy might be coming with us, or might not be, depending on what happens. That's right now. Stay tuned to find out. It's like uh, I was waiting on uh, the turkey to finish up before I headed out. Update: What happened? She sold them yesterday. No! Oh, no! Good news, guys. I just found somebody on Marketplace that was selling some tickets. So we just sent them a message. We'll see what happens. Right, Addy? Dress number one. Number one. Whoa! My heights are showing. That's okay. This has a big train, though. Can you turn? It's a lot, but doesn't it look good? Look at you, Allie! Oh, I think, I think really good. Yeah, but it's like, this would be a, like a, a hassle. It's a lot. Yeah. All right. Dress number two! Oh, Whoa! Yeah. Look at the middle! <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's a two-piece! <laughs> is it a two-piece? It is. Dang. You are like my dream prom date. <laughs> <laughs> so, we like it. We don't love it. <laughs> what? You don't love it? I don't love it. I think you look awesome. Thank you. Dress number three. Dress number three. Oh, oh fine. the sparkles are cool. Yeah, so I feel like this, I like this one better than the other one. Same, the other two. Okay. So I always just wear that top. It's cute. Yeah, this top is really cute. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, That's awesome. Back, cute. Amazing. Dress number four. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Isn't it so cute? Oh, dude, I love that. Oh, and look at the back. It's like a little spider. So I don't think it's the most flattering, like, neckline on me, but it's super adorable with puff sleeves. I think it's way cute. It's super flattering. But maybe not quite. Okay. That's you. You got the sneezes. You got the sneezes. Which one do you like the best? <laughs> Fall asleep if you like number four the best. Dress number five! Another vintage. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah? Let's see. I couldn't tell. Isn't it pretty? Oh, I think you look great. Is it velvet? It's velvet. <gasps> oh, really soft. Wow. It's a little big, but yeah. I kind of like that. I actually think you look awesome, Allie. What you got? Okay, so I like the gold part of this. We would just have to put on a black belt. Um, oh, that's like, <laughs> well, like. Oh, that looks cool. Like with a little, but this would have to be black. Mike, what do we just hear? Oh, oh, I like this one. It's cool. perfect. What number are we on? Six. Allie, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Dress number six. Oh, dang. You just look happier in this one. No, oh, I think that's so pretty. It's I like that one. I like this one. That's awesome too. Yeah, this one's fun.
dress number seven. Well, but it's not a dress. But it's not a dress. What does that mean? Uh-oh. The velvet again. It feels like I'm wearing pajamas. So this is a vintage jumpsuit. Ooh! How do we like this one compared to the last? I like this one better than the I think it may feel slightly less formal. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of trendy. Kind of hip. Okay. Number eight. Number eight. Well, I think this is pretty. Right? I think this is. Look at the back. I think it fits you really well, too. Right? Is it too much? I don't think it's too much. I think you look awesome. <laughs> Number eight. Nine. Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> Mike has it. Hey. Oh. Like a, like a lapper dress. Yeah? Like in the like like, 20s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks like you could order a gig of water. Oh. <laughs> that's kind of fun. That's a selling factor. That's kind of cute. Oh, I like it. Short. Does short seem less formal? Yeah, like, but it's got the beadwork to make it more formal. To, like, com accommodate. Okay, so we can't decide which one we like the best, so we want you guys to. In the comments? In the comments. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> In the comments. <laughs> Yay! Okay, not to be overly New Year's resolution-y or anything, but one of the things I did was buy one of these one gallon water bottles that I keep on my desk at work to try to drink more water. The other thing that I did is bought a walking treadmill for my standing desk. Here we go. It's fancier looking than I thought. You should totally get the skateboard, a skateboard on that at some point. Oh, that would be cool. Stripes. I think that remote control is it on my desk. Please check filling the lubrication oil regularly. Don't put your hand between the running bell, otherwise you will squeeze your fingers. To be honest, I actually thought the setup was going to be significantly harder, but so far it seems like it's literally on and pretty much ready to go. So yeah, we will just start it. I'm sending you an email. Did you get it? Are you Liberty? No, there it is. I got it. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Good. good okay. Good. Cool. Cool. Did, cool. Did you see that I was on a treadmill? I. It says you're on a treadmill. I have responded. I said, impressive. <gasps> Spoilers. Okay. So the goal here, um, I wear a Fitbit reasonably religiously at this point in time. So like right now, it's like 11:40, and I have. 3,400 steps. Um, it's, I would say pretty easily on a regular day, I hit at least 8,000. I'm usually aiming for 10,000, just typically as like the standard daily goal. With this, my goal was to see if I could actually up that two times to 20,000 steps per day, at least during the work week. So let's see if, it's, if we can hit it before the end of today. Hopefully, maybe. Have a little experience there. Let's go here. Okay, it is 3.30. I've done a lot of walking today. 
thing I did not anticipate is how much I'm sweating. So I feel like on, on like video days I might have to dial this back, otherwise you guys are going to see a very shiny Ben Carlin. So I am, let's see, 11,240 steps at the moment. So I don't know if I'm going to get 20,000 like here at work, but I suppose it's very possible that I'll still get quite a few at home just through normal everyday activities, carrying Addison up and down the stairs and running about, doing the things, chasing the dogs. It's, just, it's a little bit harder than I thought it would be. Phew! The work day is done. And I got in, hold on, 16,000. 41 steps. Can you see that there? Six, yeah, there's 16,041. Oh man, though, I gotta tell you, that that was more than I expected. Uh, I mean, I think it makes sense because like, I, I kept thinking about it like, um, when I go to Disney World, for example, I usually put down 20,000 steps a day, easy, like 20 to 25,000. And usually at the end of those days, my legs are pretty like spent. But the thing is, is that like, you're gradually getting those out from, you know, like early in the morning, get up at like seven or something and go until 10 or 11 at night. And this was putting down about, what, like 13,000 steps just during my work day. Um, so I don't know, I, I, my guess is that I'll get a little bit more used to it as time goes on. Um, my legs will sort of adjust. But the other thing is it's also just kind of weird getting used to like walking that much and like responding to emails or like somebody walks in and you like turn your head and you're like, oh my gosh. Um, I don't feel like I almost fell over a couple of times. So hopefully there's never like a treadmill related injury in the process of just trying to be a little bit more active. But it was fun. I have a feeling by the end of today, we'll, we'll check back before the total end of day, but I have a feeling I'll get that 20,000 before I go to sleep. <laughs> Howdy friends, today we are going to try to candy oranges so that we can dip them in chocolate. Uh, you've probably seen recently that I was working on doing chocolate covered strawberries. That was inspired by the chocolate covered oranges that we had on our um, hike up to Mill Mountain on Christmas day. Uh, and those chocolate covered oranges we had because we're trying to carry them uh, through our uh, coffee company, Carla Post Coffee. Um, the ones that I'm making will not be the ones that we are carrying. I just want to see if I can make them on my own. So we are going to candy some oranges and then dip them in chocolate. The uh, not so specific directions tell you cut them thin, but not too thin. Next, bring water to a boil where we will then boil them for like one to two minutes. Then after they're boiled, we are supposed to put them immediately into an ice bath to prevent them from continuing to cook. So, it sounds so nice when you do that. No, doesn't the ice has got like a nice like... Clink. Yeah. It smells very zesty too. Yeah, the kitchen smells awesome. When those things are on the wire rack, the next thing we do is bring a skillet, large skillet. Ugh. Anybody else have a favorite? Anybody else have a favorite eye on your stove? It's like I literally only want to use this one. Um, one cup water, one cup sugar to a boil in a skillet. I like part of the appeal of this general dessert to me at all comes from the fact that my uh, brother-in-law is uh, also like a, ch a chef and he has made dishes before that had just like the orange rind in it and I feel like I've always remembered being incredibly skeptical of liking that uh, but when I have tried these chocolate covered oranges you eat the rind and everything and it is amazing like there is no way to get it through to you like just other than you just absolutely have to try it. you have to trust me we're aiming for is a simmer here, not a boil. But from this point, orange slices go in for 45 to 50 minutes, and we're supposed to flip about every 15 or so. Yeah. 
and that is time. They look pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how they do. I feel like they're probably gonna get very, very sticky. So uh, the next thing is basically just put them on a wire rack for what sounds like literally just overnight. So we might we not might not actually be able to give them the chocolate until tomorrow, but that's okay. It'll be worth it. Twenty four hours later. It has been twenty four hours on the orange slices. I did try one earlier and they do taste good, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm heating up the chocolate right now. I'm going to put it in this pan so that I can try to dip them in there. One of the things I didn't expect, but uh, is not a problem, is that they are a lot softer uh, upon being candied than I expected. My thought was that they were going to be like very rigid based on like the sugar crystallization. I don't know. Um, but they aren't. So I'm dipping them is the only thing I'm worried about is like how do you get them into the chocolate? Uh, because the chocolate obviously is somewhat thick. So we're gonna experiment. I think they're turning out really great though. By a long shot, I don't think I can consider this my most beautiful work, but hopefully it will be delicious. Uh, nonetheless, here's here's the finished product. I ran out of chocolate for some of them. Now, from a culinary standpoint, I'm not even sure if this is actually a thing or not, but whenever I've eaten one of these chocolate-covered oranges, the thing that, like, gobsmacks me the most is the zest. Like, I think I have always been hesitant to eat the rind of an orange because it seemed like you weren't supposed to. Like, that's like the bitter part. That's the part you throw away. Um, but it's also where the zest is that like, if, you, if you've ever seen like a slow motion, super up close, like orange being like squozen, squeezed, whatever the past tense of squeeze is, uh, there's, there's like this like, burst that comes out of it and that is what we're, we're basically going for and so like when you eat one of these and again it, it sounds like almost like borderline pretentious or something but like you, you like feel it in your nose which is i don't know amazing and awesome and I, I, it makes me excited so hopefully mine turn out as good as the ones that we are going to be selling what do you think alice dude i'm excited yeah mm -hmm. we gotta let them dry a little bit before we can eat them how long in like an hour can you wait? Yeah, I'll wait. Okay, it is moment of truth time. Addie's the judge. <laughs> Look at you resting your little arm on the counter. She's like, She's like, yeah, no big deal. I come to this place all the time. <laughs> she feels like a regular at a diner. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Addy, are you excited to try it? Well, you really can't do it yet, but someday no, you'll someday. try Dad's, Dad's chocolate oranges. Okay. Let's see here. This one looks good, I think. That's what I was going to go for. This is the one? You want to like both? I don't know. It? Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, ready? Okay. I think that's very good. I think that's really close. I think, it, yeah, I don't know if it's perfect. I think there's a little bit of bitterness still coming through on the rind. But not Maybe because it's a small orange, though. Could be. Could just be literally different oranges than the ones they make it with. Oh, true. I didn't think, I'm going to do one with, like, less rind, more... More orange bits? Mm-hmm. Okay. That had a nice crunch. Mm-hmm. Any Chocolate difference? on both sides. Well, good. I like it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm. That one might be better than that one. Mm, I think it's because this one's so thick. Mm -hmm. Yum. Well, I think you did it, babe. That's pretty neat. That's successful. I would do it again. Well, maybe, maybe. I would make you like a party or something. Well, I'm just saying, yeah, I would do it again when you did all the work. <laughs> I'll eat them again. <laughs> You'll support me again. <laughs> yeah. All right, Addy. Bathtub update. How are you, girl? She feels like zins out. <laughs> she likes it though, right? Yeah, she still really likes it. She's super chill.
When I first wanted to start a project like this one, I always tentatively called it Life on Purpose. And the whole idea would be using the series as a motivational tool to push myself to try new things. And this week, I felt like I was living on purpose the exact way I intended. I cooked something new and went for a walk at my desk. Living on purpose wasn't supposed to hold me accountable to, I don't even know what, being interesting, I guess. It was finding meaning in things like bath time, or just taking the time to make an event out of something that maybe we wouldn't have done together, like picking out a dress. Let us know which one is your favorite, but otherwise, thank you for watching, and until next time.